Hi there, this is a very short video about my recent experience with a questionable mains lead that came with some piece of equipment from China. Unfortunately I can't tell which because it had a Eurostyle plug and so I threw it in the parts bin where it stayed for I guess at least one or two years. But then I needed a short mains lead with a C13 connector and decided to use this cable and put a UK plug on it. This is when I noticed a very thin wires and crumbly insulation. In the video the marking of the cable is kind of hard to read. It's H05VV-F3G0.75mm2 300-500V. And I think this is supposed to mean 3 cores with an area of 075 square millimeters each. Wire sizes of 0.75 mm square is a common European standard and roughly the same as AWG18. 0.75 square mm means a diameter of about 1 mm and I measure here clearly far less than 1 mm. For comparison this is how a genuine 0.75 square mm wires look like. In the fake the wires are non-magnetic which is at least something but feels strangely bouncy, I suspect copper coated aluminium. Which explains the resistance of a single core of this roughly one meter long cable. About one ohm, which is a lot. I decided to have some fun, shorten the C13 plug and use the other end to pump some current through the cable. The red meter shows the voltage and the yellow one the current. At the same time I monitor the temperature with a thermal camera it's now dissipating close to 10 watts. If your mains voltage is 115 watts, that current would flow if you were using this cable to light a 60 watt bulb. In Europe you could run two 60 watt bulbs in parallel for the same current. By no means a significant load and the cable is good warm already. Increasing to about 3.5 amps and the cable is now dissipating 25 watts, which is probably close to damaging it permanently. But this thing is anyway for the bin, so 4.25 amps and close to 40 watts and I can smell hot plastic. Why stop there? 6 amps and now the cable is dissipating 84 watts. I should point out that in the UK you can draw up to 13 amps from a normal wall socket. The cable is now smelling and I can see smoke coming out at the open end. The highest temperature is more than 120 degrees or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me zoom down, I hope you can see the wisps of smoke. I think I'm going to turn it off now because it stinks a lot and before it starts a fire. The insulation of the individual cores has melted and is sticking together. And even the outer insulation is rather sticky. I should have tested this before partially melting it, but anyway, let's see if the two wires could still handle high voltage. Starting with 500 volts. If you remember, the cable marking seemed to indicate that it was rated for 300 500 volts. There is no problem with 500 volts, which I find amazing given the state of the melted insulation. Ok, but what about 1000 volts? No problem there either. Good, but somehow not quite satisfying. Now that I have a flash tester, let's use it. The tester is set to 1000 volts, which is applied for 10 seconds. If there is a flash over, an ear splitting buzzer will sound. But nothing. Which confirms the successful 1000 volt test I just did with the XTEC. But the XTEC was limited to 1000 volts and the Claire is not. I have set it to its full 5000 volts capability. And we have an immediate flash over, somewhere inside the cable. I can also smell some burning. To be fair, I was amazed that the melted insulation could even withstand 1000 volts. The question is, can it still handle 1000 volts now that a flashover has happened? I set the voltage back to 1000 volts and sure enough it now fails at that voltage as well. For fairness and when I had the flash tester out, I tested the cut off part with the Eurostyle plug. This was not melted and while very short, it still gives a better representation of the original insulation capability of this cable. This is the 5000 volt for 10 seconds test. Well, it passed this test just fine. 
just for fun, I repeated the XTEC 1000 volt test on the cable after it had flashed over and sure enough the resistance is so low that the XTEC in insulation mode can hardly measure it. A more accurate low voltage reading says it's now 19 kilo ohms. In any case this cable goes straight into the bin and be aware of dodgy mains cables. Measuring the cable resistance is a good non-destructive indicator and fairly easy to do. If you enjoy my videos don't forget to like and subscribe, there are many more projects, repairs and reviews coming up and it would be great if you decided supporting this channel by becoming a Patreon. Thanks for watching.